dernier jour du NAV, on est à, dans le bout de, de Foundry, dans la pièce secrète, où Mariana va nous présenter euh, des images de leur prochaine version de Nook. En fait, une, un nouveau produit complètement, en fait, qui est Nook Studio. Une version de Nook avec un timeline, un timeline donc, qui va nous permettre beaucoup, beaucoup plus facilement euh, de conformer un show et de travailler en contexte. Donc, euh, on va voir ça avec elle. Mariana, hello! Hi. So, uh, we're here in, uh, in the foundry booth, in the secret room, in the back, uh, yeah, and uh, we're here so uh, that you can show us um, Nuke Studio, so, so what's the new product? Oh, you hold it, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> it's my microphone. So Nuke Studio is um, the newest product is gonna be is gonna be coming out at the end of the year, and it's our high-end finishing, compositing, transcoding, visual effects management tool. So it's an all-in-one tool. You're gonna be able to just do your whole job from start to finish, from editorial, compositing, transcoding, folder structure, everything, all in one without leaving your seat. Wow, that's cool. Because you we you just have Nuke for all the compositing. And you have uh, like Hero for uh, where you had like media man management and timeline and stuff. So, is it really like both together, or it's even more than that? Um, it's both together, but it's definitely more than that. Yeah. Because if you've seen Hero's interface yeah. and Nook's interface, this interface has a little bit more. So it's two in one, but more because now we have we also have layer based real time soft effects so you're okay. going to be able to do client sessions and do 4k playback real time playback cool yes and it's going to also do gpu rendering on the fly so you're going to be able to be with the client show him everything change do changes on the fly and also you can change the soft effects and send them to nuke as well if you want to do them instead of layer based if you want to send them as node based node based Okay. So now it's going to be very responsive because if you want to have clients in the back, it got, it's got to be fast. So um, um, can we just go and maybe tour the interface and see a bit how what's uh, what, what you're, uh, you have to show us sure. about that? Yeah. So if you guys see this, is it kind of looks like Nook, um, like here of the first time that you open it up. But one of the new things here is that you have this Nook menu right here. So I'm just going to scroll through the video for a little bit. Uh, so right now what, what we're doing is just bringing in an EDL, doing, doing our conform, making sure that the offline actually matches because we know that EDLs and the cuts change all the time. And then what's going on is we're just doing some slips and slides to making sure that everything's actually correct. So as conform, you can yeah, you will be able to import an XML from a, an offline software, so offline editor, and then from there you'll be able to go and get the camera, camera originals and rebuild your edit from there? Exactly. Um, so you can bring in XMLs or EDLs, but you can also build your own EDLs or XMLs okay. from Hero. Okay. So if you don't have an, an editing system to build this, you can do it from Hero. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is what, what's happening right now. And then now is just a compare your AV, making sure that you know all of the, the offline is matching with our clips. Now this is now we're gonna see some of the new new features that are coming into Nook Studio. Let me backtrack a little bit right now. So let me bring this up. So it's gonna have real time soft effects. So we're gonna have in this new Nook menu, we're gonna have a create com, transform, time warp, a grade. You can gonna be able to bring in your lots, your CDLs, color spaces, and you're gonna also be able to have annotations in there. So not just you can do, you're going to be able to do slates and put text in there, but you're also going to be able to do annotations like you can in CineSync. Cool. I'll show you guys that in a second. So right now, because uh, one of the clips is not matching, uh, we're going to be doing a time warp. And with a time warp, you're going to be able to have a curve editor because um, some, most of the time, some of the time warps are not linear. Yes. So with a curve editor, you're going to be able to do all of your time change mm -hmm. effects in the timeline. Very cool. So you can apply these effects directly on the clip, yes. and then really conform. And it's very cool that you, uh, yeah, you've had this like comparison feature to compare with the uh, the original edit. So yeah, yeah. very convenient. And if you see here, the soft effects are layer based. So right now, when we apply a time warp, a time warp is actually living on top of the oh, clip. Cool. It's just a, it's just smaller than the timeline. 
and because they're layer based, if you apply one on top of each other and then you change the layering order, yeah. it's gonna the will affect e exactly. The, uh, the, uh, the Oh, exactly. Cool. And these uh, soft effects, you're going to be able to clone them, you're going to be able to expand them, you're going to be able to cut them, so you can do anything that you want with the soft okay. effects. And you can animate them, and you can also open them up in Nuke, oh, actually, in yeah, Nuke yeah, Studio, yeah. just as Node-based. As yeah. node okay, so you can transform this layer as a node. Exactly. Okay. So, okay. Uh, because the soft effects are main to have like a client session yeah, yeah, yeah. where the client goes, oh, gain it down, gamma it down, mm -hmm. like really yeah. fast changes. Mm -hmm. But then you know how clients are, so they can be like, okay, apply a time warp, okay, now agreed, now and at some point it's gonna start building and building up, right? So at some point maybe you're gonna have so many soft effects that you're gonna be like, okay, maybe I just need to open this as a comp and maybe do more of the changes mm -hmm. inside of the comp. Okay, cool. So let me scrub a little bit more so we can do a little bit of see a little bit of that. So there is a curve editor. We are, we're applying the we're applying the time warp. We're applying those changes. And now, so let me go back a little bit. So now we've just changed the layout. So in Nook Studio, just like you can in Nook or in Hero, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to change the layout. You're gonna have there's a lot that's new as well over here in the layout menu. You're gonna have you're gonna have the ability of have many different layouts. So editing, conforming, compositing, reviewing. Based on the work you're doing at, at that moment. Exactly, cool. exactly. And one of the big things um, is that in Hero before you couldn't really do any any sort of color corrections. And now because in Nook Studio is full on Nook in there, uh, you're gonna be able to do color corrections. So you can use it for that as well. So right now. Uh, we're just going to be changing, we're going to be doing some color corrections in that clip uh, with an OCIO CDL transform and we're going to be using the scopes. The scopes are going to tell you when, when you're going out of range, when maybe you're going over the limits of your color space and then you're going to be able to do all sorts of color corrections in there. So you can do them in the timeline as soft effects but you can also do all of the color manipulations that you can do in Nook. So, let me scrub up a little bit. So, as you can see now, it's we're doing some of the color corrections there. See, here we can see that the scopes are telling us yeah. that we're going over the limits. We're gonna fix that, and there it is, yeah. color corrected. So now, let me scroll a little bit farther down so that then uh, we can see what I was talking about, cloning the different soft effects as well. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you can just, instead of just saying, Command uh, C or Control C for copying and pasting. If you do it with Shift, you're going to be able to clone, and then one change that, that you apply on the master is going to be affecting all of the other clones on the timeline. And then from here, we're going to apply some other uh, color corrections. In this case, we're going to be using a grade node. So yeah, it's color, color correction tool. Yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Like cool. the ones that, exactly like the ones you have in Nuke now with the in, in, let me head back, the in panel color wheel, which was a new feature in Nuke 8. And so now we can see uh, besides the soft effects here, this is the create comp menu. And this is what's gonna let you just open up your comp into Nook. And if you see, right here is selecting to do so the you can effects. So take a clip and create a comp from this clip? Exactly, That's exactly. And so now, ah, this new tab opens up. And if you see, like here is our sequence. And now the only thing that happened, we still have our viewer, we have our, our project bin, where all of our clips live, we have everything. But now we also have our comp and it is full on Nukex in there. So if you want to do deep compositing, uh, anything that you want to do in Nukex, you can do 3D Tracker, which is actually what's, uh, what's going to happen now, so that we're able to get rid of all of the different tracking markers just by using the projection-based technique with the camera tracker. And now we're going to be removing all of the different trackers. And if you can see, it's all Nukex, 3D camera tracker in there. And now, we're, uh, we're also seeing that it's just doing, it's gonna be caching, uh, okay. it's gonna be caching the comp that we just. And rendering and then we'll be able to play it back in real time, so. Exactly. Very and cool. It's, 
it's gonna have a, a render farm, a built-in render farm, GPU-based render farm. So in case you don't have one, you can use Nuke Studios. But if you have another render farm that you already have set up in your studio, you're gonna be able to hook it up to your render farm, but also use the one that is built in into Nuke Studio. So you can take advantage of all the machines that you have in your facility, or just use the one that is built in here. Very cool. And um, on what platform is it going to be offered on uh, Linux? Linux? Windows. All of our products run, except Katana, all of our products run in all of the operating systems. So all of the flavors of Linux, Windows, and OS. Cool. Mac OS too. Yeah. Excellent. And as for playback, what do you rely on to play back 4K on a client monitor or a reference monitor? So what we're gonna do, we're we're gonna come out when Nook Studio comes out. We're also gonna recommend specs so that you have a beefy machine that can actually be able to do real-time 4K playback. So for example, you're gonna be needing an, an NVIDIA card, a 4000 Quadro yeah. NVIDIA card, and so on. But yeah, we're gonna we're, on the website we're gonna have a whole recommendation so that plays in real time. Cool. And uh, do you know as far as uh, OpenCL and uh, AT, uh, ATI AMD cards, was the support for that? So yes. We, right now we support like all the Blackmagic ATI cards um, and it's going to work fine with them. But if you want to do like the 4K, yeah. like the 4K playback, you're going to need something like NVIDIA because it's more GPU based. Okay, got it. Excellent. Um, and here, so this is this is another thing that's pretty cool. Let me just pause it because the way that here is structured with the naming conventions, for example, right now on that timeline we have all of the live action, um, and we know that you know the because this commercial is has a lot of CG cows or transparent CG cows uh, that were made in New Zealand. So all these compers made all the all the. All 3D and the yeah, CG, yeah. all those 3D generalists. V VFX heavy. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> VFX heavy. Um, so you can build your track from an export structure uh, that Hero is relying on, just as you know where those renders live, just as you can now in Hero. So it's just going to read in those files. And so right now we can see the export structure, and it's just looking for those CG, CG cows based on the folder structure that we had set the naming conventions that we had set. And then now it brought in all of the different shots on top of the live action. So you oh, can start cool. going from previous to animation to look development and comp and start seeing exactly how your uh, commercial or your, yeah, exactly, is gonna, um, is gonna be going down so the road. So you can see like every step of the production, so it becomes a very central to our, your, all your workflow, actually. Exactly, exactly. So you can do so the previous animation, look the comp, and this is new as well. This is something that you couldn't currently do in Hero, and this is annotations. So right now, you can just, on the viewer, start saying, okay, move the cow <laughs> behind this, yeah. this post over here. And then you're gonna be able to, what's really cool, so not only can you do the annotations, change the colors, you have all this menu over here to change the font and the color and everything else. But also, in this case, we're um, putting the annotation that we wanna have that tree removed. But then what's really cool, we open up that script in, um, we go to the compositing layout, right? So we just head to our tab over here about a node graph. And let me come over here to show you. So, and right now what, what is happening is just by right clicking all of the shots and saying create comp, it is now creating, has created all of the comps uh, for you. So just by double clicking, it'll come to the node graph and it'll take you to that script. Um, and so on the annotations, I just wanted to show as well that this is very cool. So not only are the annotations in your sequence on the viewer, but you can also, there will be brought in into Nook as so a... An annotation node right there waiting so for the, uh, the compositor too. Exactly, exactly. So that you can see if maybe this script is open someplace else in a, in a, you know, in a standalone license yeah. of Nook, that they're able to see what is going on with, uh, with the annotations as well and see the frames that you have to make the changes. Facts will what pretty easily and like Conveniently, we can't wait to see that. And when should it be uh, available for us? So there's going to be a beta in the summer, and then we are aiming to have to release it by the end by the end of the year. And yeah, you're right. It is meant to be 
a collaborative tool, but also if you work on your own or if you work with maybe locations around the world, you know, like out like we know that there's yeah. facilities all around the world, maybe you're in Vancouver, in India, it's meant to be a collaborative tool for that as well. So whether you're a small shop or you are a big shop or you're a one-man band, you can do it all in Nook Studio. Cool. Well, excellent. Thank you, Mariana. Cool. Alors, on vient de voir, euh, parce qu'en exclusivité, euh, Nook Studio, qui est maintenant une version vraiment intégrée avec plusieurs outils, qui ça nous rapproche, rapproche beaucoup du euh, montage online, de la finition. Ça nous permet de gérer, de prendre vraiment un, un montage offline, de, de gérer sur un timeline conformé, faire la colo, et après ça, de prendre chaque shot et faire du compositing, comme on a toujours fait dans Nook. Un bêta qui s'en vient l'été, et euh, ben, vers la fin de l'année, on devrait avoir un release pour tout le monde. Alors... Euh, Bien content de vous avoir présenté ça, d'avoir pu vous le présenter.